Angular 19 was released on 19th of November, so if you are an Angular developer or you are interested in the latest Angular features, by the end of this video you will learn all of them. So here I generated an Angular 19 project, because Angular 19 is stable now. You can see versions in package.json. And the first feature that we are getting is the standalone components by default. What does it mean? Inside components we don't need to write standalone true anymore. It is there by default. What you can write instead is standalone false if for some reason you want to use your component inside modules. But I hope not, this is why this is a new syntax. Additionally, if you are on the Angular 18 and you are running ng-update, your code will be automatically refactored and standalone true will be removed, because it's a default now. Also, we got an improvement to the signals and it is called linked signals. Let's have a look. So what do we know about signals? We have either signal or we have computed. Just to remind you, computed is the possibility to create a new signal based on your old signal. In this case here we are creating username signal and as you can see it's a signal, not writable signal, so it is only for reading and inside computed we are returning some calculations based on our user signal. In this case it's an array of names of the user. It means that every single time when our array of users changes, our computed signal will also change. Linked signal works similarly. As you can see here, we are using linked signal. The syntax is exactly the same, but back we are getting writable signal. So the only difference is that here we are getting signal, so it is read-only, and here it is a writable signal. And now we can call set on it in order to make an update. For example, here I am adding a string foo inside our array of names. Let's have a look in browser. This is our list of usernames, which means it's a computed signal. And this list is our linked signal. Now I'm clicking change linked usernames. As you can see, foo string was added to this list. But now let's try to change users, so our initial source. I'm clicking change users, and as you can see, it disappeared. So we don't have foo anymore, but our list was changed. Why that? Let's have a look on our function change users. Here I updated our initial users array, and I created here a new user bus. As you can see here, buzz appeared, but we don't see foo anymore. What does it mean? When our source changes, like in our case user signal, then our value of our linked signal is resetted. It doesn't really matter what we did here with set, it is completely resetted with the new value. And you for sure think, okay, this sounds really weird. And I can just say that you will use it quite rarely. Typically you want to use just computed, because they are needed everywhere. Writable signals are needed when you want to do something like optimistic updates. Maybe you want to show for the user that something changes before you are doing this API call. Then link signal is a nice way to go. The next thing that we got is that inputs, outputs, view children and view child that were writing in a signals way are now stable. Just to remind you, we can write inside our child component input false and it will be an input property which is boolean and this active in this case is an input signal. Now this construction is stable and there is also a schematic how to update your whole project to the signals way. So inside console you can simply run signal input migration, then output migration and queries migration for view children and view child. After this the whole code will be updated to the new version. But don't forget, if you are using inputs and you are getting signals, inside your HTML you also need to use round brackets in order to read values. Another thing that we are getting is called resource, and this is a new way how you can read your values to the signal from the API. This is how it looks like. Here I have a profile resource where we are calling a resource variable, and inside we are providing this object. This object has two things, but loader here is mandatory. Our loader returns for us a promise. Again, not an RxJS stream, it's a promise. This is why we can use here anything which returns for us a promise, like for example new promise or fetch, which is by default there inside browser. And here we are fetching this URL slash post slash, and here is an ID of our post. 
After this, we want to get a JSON. And again, inside our load, we got the request as a parameter. And this is this request on the top that we are getting. Most importantly, inside request, we are specifying a single property or an object with different properties. And these are all dependencies of our loader, which actually means when they are changed, this loader will refetch data for us. In this case here, we are saying, OK, post ID is our writable signal here on the top. And when it changes, we are fetching this request again with the new post ID. And what we're getting back here is a resource reference of the post. This is why the data type is the post. And the second parameter, an object with post ID number, is this request that we are passing. This is why inside HTML you can see profile resource. Actually, it's not a profile resource. It should be named post resource dot value. And this is exactly the value of our signal, which we can read and get here a title, for example. As you can see in browser, this component was rendered and we fetched a post with ID 1. Now when I'm clicking change post, we change the signal post ID. We're getting a new API calls to slash post slash 2 and this information was re-rendered. Which actually means it's a nice way to get information from the API, render it inside markup with the signals. But there is a problem. It only works for GET requests. You can't do any mutation with resource, at least yet. It is only for GET. POST, PUT, PATCH and DELETE won't work here. This is not a goal of the resource. There is also a small update on Angular CDK where they simplified custom theming and additionally created a new time picker component that we can use in our applications. And the last feature that is really huge is an incremental hydration when you have a server-side rendering. This Angular application is rendered with server-side. We can open the source code of the page and here we see Angular 19 inside H1 and after this we see child placeholder and all other content like our users, Jack, John and so on. But here we need to look on this child placeholder. What is this code? As you can see in app component HTML, I am not rendering app child directly. I am using a defer block. Just to remind you, we are using defer when we don't want initially to render some content, but we want to load this bundle and component later when we need to. It makes our bundle smaller and our code is easier to support. In this case here, we are saying, OK, this app child component must be loaded on the hover. And before we hovered on this element, we just see a child placeholder. The main point is that previously inside Angular server-side rendering, we didn't have an incremental hydration, which actually means everything was coming at once and these deferred blocks only exist on the client. And what we see here is exactly how it was before. We are seeing here child placeholder. But what we can do, first of all, we can use here hydrate on hover. So essentially all these triggers are still working, but now with word hydrate, we can use them on server side. And we must also jump to app config TS and here add with incremental hydration. This will enable this feature. When you put a word hydrate in your defer block, it means that this block will render the whole component content and not the placeholder. This is exactly what's happening. Here, instead of child placeholder, we're seeing child false JSON server, which means we're not only rendered the component content, but we also made an API call using resource and rendering this information here. But still, all this logic with on hover is working exactly like before. This component will be deferred on the client until our event, in this case hover, is triggered. We can see here I'm hovering on this block and only then this chunk is loaded as always and then this API call is done. But still incremental hydration helps us to render specific components on the backend. And there is one more trigger which is extremely useful with hydrate and we want to use it for the static content. Just imagine that we have a static content where no information can change. This is just some markup. We can write here then on viewport and then hydrate never. 
and this hydrate never means exactly that it will be always dehydrated and it will never be hydrated on the client. As you can see now here, this component is completely unusable. On hover nothing happens and when I'm clicking change post ID, it doesn't trigger an event because this is just a static markup without any binded JavaScript. As you can see, Angular 19 features are quite awesome, but if you are more focused on preparing for Angular interview that you want to pass, I prepared for you a free PDF that you can get in the description box below and it contains all most popular Angular interview questions.